past few months, Chinese airlines have constantly shown up on flight deal websites for their extraordinarily low fares. Want to go from Italy to Australia for 630 euros return? There you go. From London to New Zealand return for 540 quid? On Air China, you can. From Germany to Taiwan for 450 euros return? I just booked that deal to showcase Air China's 777 in a future video. And even the journey I'm taking you along on today was just 400 euros, albeit one way. Still cheaper than any other airline would have been though. And it gives me a chance to show you not just what Air China is like right now, but also how they've changed in the past few years, as I've showcased the airline's economy class product on a very similar routing from Tokyo Haneda via Beijing to Vienna back in 2019. Today's trip starts in Seoul instead of Tokyo, but also terminates in Vienna, so we'll examine how four years and one pandemic later, Air China's economy class product has evolved. The most significant difference today is that Air China's Vienna flights are now operated by their state-of-the-art Airbus A350s, as are most of the airline's routes to Europe, instead of the dilapidated Airbus A330s they used throughout Europe well into 2023. I'm excited you've decided to join me, and I'm looking forward to sharing in detail what was good, bad, and peculiar about flying aboard Air China, and why the hell they are so cheap. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers welcome from freezing Seoul, where we're on the way to Incheon International Airport. I just arrived here in Seoul the day before after catching the world's shortest Airbus A380 flight operated by Asiana Airlines from Tokyo Narita. I'm working on finishing up this video right now as well, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel to not miss it. Air China, like most non-SkyTeam carriers, uses Terminal 1 at Incheon Airport. Their sizable check-in area is open from 3 hours until 50 minutes before departure. Apparently, a common issue when departing Korea is that pesky kimchi in cabin luggage, so make sure your kimchi is safely stowed in your checked bag. My kimchi-free suitcase was tagged all the way to Vienna, so I won't have to worry about it in Beijing. Our first flight from Seoul to Beijing takes only around 90 minutes and will be operated by this 2014 built Boeing 737-800 registered Bravo 1958. Thank you. Our aircraft has three rows of business class up front in a 2-2 configuration. Snapping some photos as well for our Instagram story. If you want to follow our journeys along live as they happen, make sure to follow us on Instagram at simply underscore aviation. Back in economy class, Air China's Boeing 737-800s feature the standard 3-3 configuration with our plane featuring Recaro 3510A seats. I'll be in 27L on this 90-minute flight to Beijing. The seat is quite basic, without a dedicated headrest, pillows were also waiting on each seat with soft reusable fabric covers. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom is good and the seats also come with standard seat back pockets and a tray table. Hardware boxes for the entertainment system take away a bit of space for passengers in middle seats. There are no universal power outlets or USB ports installed, and inside the removable hand rests you will find an audio entertainment panel. 
One thing I was immediately suspicious about were those pillows. I think they're a great amenity to have and big plus points if they have reusable fabric covers as that makes them so much more comfortable than those scratchy single-use covers many other airlines use. However, having reusable pillows is highly unusual on such short flight as it takes a lot of effort to constantly wash the covers after each short haul flight and my suspicion was that Air China maybe just doesn't and those stains support that suspicion, so I'll leave mine in the overhead bin for now. As we're pushing back and getting ready for departure, it's time for the safety video. Contrary to the trend in other parts of the world, drop-down screens are still widely used by Chinese airlines and they even fit brand new A321neos and 737 Maxes with them still. Welcome aboard this Air China flight. Thank you for your attention. We wish you a safe and pleasant journey. In the ceiling above you, you may also find adjustable air vents and personal reading lights. Roughly half an hour into the flight, a complimentary dinner was served. For the main course, one option was offered, beef stew with cabbage and rice. This was served alongside a bread roll and butter and a cup of apricot yogurt. All in all, a fantastic meal service for a 90-minute flight in economy with a delicious main course. As for beverages, hot and cold options were available alongside beer and wine, and while apple and tomato juice were served, orange juice was peculiarly missing. As this Boeing 737 is fairly new, it's already fitted with Boeing's sky interior, which includes LED mood lighting and larger overhead bins, among other adjustments. The plane is also fitted with a stream to your device entertainment system with a very limited amount of English language content though. Now we're already descending into Beijing.
见新闻，请乘员解除滑行。Thank you. Yes, We've just left the plane, so let's have a look at how complicated and lengthy it is to transit here in Beijing. First, we went through a security control, followed by a passport check, and then we were already on our way to the departure gate all without entering China and no visa was necessary for me as an Austrian citizen. It took us all but 15 minutes to complete the transit formalities, which at an airport the size of Beijing is incredible. This is aided by the fact that seemingly all of Air China's international operation is consolidated in Concourse E of Capital Airport's Terminal 3, meaning we don't have to switch concourses, saving us some time. The airport has three main terminals, numbered 1, 2, and 3, with the latter being by far the biggest. Terminal 3 was opened in 2008 in time for the Beijing Summer Olympics and consists of three separate concourses, C, D, and E. Counted together, Beijing Capital Airport's Terminal 3 is so big that according to Wikipedia, so take that with a grain of salt, it's the world's ninth largest building by usable floor area. And it is absolutely massive, especially considering there is a second huge triangular hall like the one we're in right now at the other end. After breezing through the transfer process, I was left with six more hours at Beijing Capital Airport, and they were very weird and mighty uncomfortable, and here's why. The weird part was that despite a healthy amount of long-haul flights departing later tonight, the terminal seemed deserted. The feeling was exacerbated by the fact that still, most shops were shuttered. Not just closed, but completely empty. There are some restaurants and food outlets, but all of them closed down for the night already, leaving just a Starbucks and a Costa coffee as the only sources for food and beverages for most passengers. Something very unique about Air China, or rather their lounges at Beijing Capital Airport, is that they let passengers with Priority Pass memberships in. This is a lounge access program that people can either pay for with an annual fee or get for free with some of the more premium credit cards. It is rare that these programs get you into airline lounges, as Priority Pass mostly covers airport oriented lounges, the ones not specifically tied to an airline. And with Air China, you even get access to their quote-unquote first-class lounge, which not even Star Alliance Gold frequent flyer status holders get into. It's a nice lounge with some tasty food. I had some of the beef noodle soup and a couple of dumplings. Delicious. However, there too, I encountered something very odd. After being unable to locate a coffee maker, the lounge attendants directed me to this bar, which, as the sign rightly says, is self-service. But behind the counter, there was a huge restaurant quality professional coffee maker, which according to two separate staff members was self-service. Needless to say, I did not have a coffee and neither did anyone else. But I had plenty of tea to drink to keep me warm because here is why this transit was uncomfortable. This video was recorded in late December and apparently they don't bother too much with properly heating the terminal because even though it initially seemed okay, the coldness really got to me after an hour or so. Since there was no wind, and with how long it took me to really start to shiver, I personally estimate the temperature to have been in the lower double digit Celsius degrees, maybe 12 or so. You could see everyone throughout the terminal hanging out in coats, and luckily I did not check mine in, but even with the coat, it was so cold I regularly filled my water bottle with hot water from the tea maker and kept it under my coat. Since the airport's Wi-Fi is subject to Chinese internet censorship, the only thing I was able to get to work was my bookmark for a Japanese variety TV show. So to sum up the transit, very, very, very cold, at least during the month of December, most stores and restaurants shuttered or at least closed late at night, Wi-Fi with a firewall blocking everything from Netflix to YouTube, and a large but also kind of odd lounge. But luckily we didn't have to spend too much time in the terminal as they actually started boarding for our flight early. Instead of 2.10 a.m. as written on the boarding pass, they started at 1.55 a.m. 15 minutes early. I'm not complaining. 
Taking us on our 10-hour journey to Vienna tonight is Bravo 322 Hotel, a 2021-built Airbus A350-900, one of 30 in Air China's fleet. Upon boarding, Chinese language newspapers were available. The airline currently operates 30 Airbus A350s, all of the Dash 900 variant, and took delivery of many of them during the pandemic, which is why they are now finally making it onto their long-haul routes. They all have the same configuration, with 32 seats in business class, 24 in premium economy, and 256 in regular economy. Only in business class will you find a difference between some of the A350s, as the older ones feature Collins Aerospace Super Diamond seats, including ours, versus newer ones which have the Recaro CL6720s. In premium economy, you'll find three rows of Recaro's PL3530 seats in a 242 configuration, and in our part of the plane, Air China chose the popular Recaro CL3710 seats, employing the plane's standard 333 configuration, even on their newest ones, which come with a wider cabin, as Airbus tweaked the interior walls of the A350 in 2022, with all planes delivered from 2023 onwards coming with slightly wider cabins, which would enable 10 seat per row layouts, but for now Air China stuck with 9, which is commendable. Each seat comes with a headrest which is adjustable vertically on the sides and down here for some extra neck support. And waiting for us already were a pillow with a soft cover made from real fabric. This time I'm pretty sure it's a clean one and a blanket. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom was good, and Air China even chose to install footrests, which is nice, but it does take away a bit of shin clearance, and I personally would have preferred they weren't there. The seat back pocket comes with these two handy extra pockets for things like glasses or your phone. Beneath the seats, two universal power outlets are available for each three seats. The tray table can be half opened or fully opened, and there is a literature compartment behind it. Each seat also comes with an adjustable personal entertainment screen with the audio port and a USB-A port at the bottom, and there is a coat hook on the side of the seat. Personal reading lights are installed in the ceiling above you, but they can't be adjusted, and there are also no personal air vents. These newer Recaro seats also come with steps, so it's easier to reach the overhead bins. Each seat also offers standard recline, and the armrests can be removed. All in all, a very good, state-of-the-art economy class heart product, leaving nothing to desire. For your entertainment, a Panasonic X3 system is installed, with plenty of movies and TV shows available to stream on demand, however, again, with a fairly limited selection of English language content. Some music, as well as a dedicated section for kids, was offered too. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard this Air China flight. Your seatbelt is securely fastened and they will move on from a switch door or set to airplane mode. Thank you.
After takeoff, the crew first started off with a beverage service where I just went with a cup of water. This was followed by a cold snack service, as by now it's around 3 in the morning. We've got what appears to be a cheese sandwich, a cup of sweet yogurt, and a raisin muffin. Don't ask me why there was a straw alongside the meal, that's very atypical. During the meal service, the cabin lights were already dimmed and lots of passengers were asleep already. We are approximately level at uh, 36,000 feet with a cruising speed at about 700 kilometers per hour and uh, we'll be arriving at our destination airport at uh, 0620 local and if you need any help during the trip please call our flight attendant thank you for laying air China enjoy your journey the lavatories were pretty standard not too small with soap and moisturizer After staying up to show you the dinner service, it's time for me to get some sleep as well. During the night, the crew regularly went through the cabin with cups of water and in the rear galley, chocolate bars were available if you wanted a snack. After some hours, the cabin lights came on and I figured it was time for breakfast as this was the main hot meal service on my flight back in 2019. However, much to my dismay, the crew turned on the cabin lights some 10 minutes before they even started serving breakfast, and by the time they reached my row, the lights have been on for almost an hour. And they didn't even serve breakfast right away, once again they first came through offering beverages. I went with a cup of tea and some apple juice, because again, there was no orange juice. For breakfast, two choices were given for the hot main course, either scrambled eggs or congee. The scrambled eggs came with a sausage and some breakfast potatoes and were served alongside a cold bread roll with butter, some melon, another cup of that sweet yogurt, a marinated egg, and a pack of yutsuan chatsai, which are pickled mustard stems. Chatsai literally translated simply means pressed vegetables, and yutsuan is a town near Chongqing where these were made. All in all, an okay breakfast service. Very okay. Not good, but not terrible certainly an improvement over the breakfast meal quality in 2019. Afterwards, tea and coffee were offered, where I went with a coffee and milk, but which turned out to be coffee and creamer. As we're starting our approach into Vienna, let's answer the two remaining questions. How did Air China's long-haul economy change since 2019, and how are they so cheap? The second question about the low prices is quick to answer. You see, Air China came into existence in 1988 when the Chinese government dissolved the state monopoly for air travel, splitting up what was then CAAC Airlines into six carriers, Air China being one of them, and as the carrier based in the nation's capital, retaining the classic CAAC livery to this day. The symbol on the tail, by the way, is called a fenghuang and is a stylized version of a bird in Chinese mythology that reigns over all other birds. And the word mark on the side of the planes was actually written by then President Deng Xiaoping. But I digress. Air China is, to this day, like China Southern and China Eastern and many other airlines throughout China, mostly owned by the government and is tasked with connecting the country with the outside world. These connections don't always make financial sense, and to not fly around empty planes, Chinese airlines often offer extremely cheap fares to fill up their international routes, so keep an eye open for extremely low fares on some of them during off-season, particularly from or to international airports where many different Chinese airlines offer various routes to, such as Sydney, Rome or Seoul. Now to the second question, how did they change since 2019? Well, hard product-wise, it's night and day. Air China's Airbus A350s are flawless, leaving little room for improvement. Soft product-wise, Air China shows promising improvements, but it remains mediocre at best, especially in terms of meal quality. Optional amenities apart from the meals were limited to the blanket, pillow and headphones, so they're not an airline that goes above and beyond with things like eye shades or hot towels. What remains as my only major issue with this whole journey is that transiting at Beijing Capital Airport was weird and uncomfortable. 
Having more shops and restaurants open and heating the terminal properly would be enough to have left no negative impression of the airport. After all, it was quick and convenient to transit at. So all in all, the journey was how I expected it to be. An improvement over 2019, even though some elements are still not on par with other carriers, even other state-owned Chinese carriers such as China Eastern. If you do come across a low fare on our China, I would not hesitate to choose them again. After all, I have another trip booked with them already. But if they are priced similarly to other carriers, I might go with the alternative depending on what's available. With that, welcome to Vienna. I hope you enjoyed another exhaustingly long video. Thanks to all of our fantastic paid sponsors, we are able to dedicate more effort into our videos and go into even more detail to bring you maybe not the most entertaining, but the most detailed, well-researched flight reviews on the internet. If you share our passion for air travel and want to join us on other trips again soon, make sure you are subscribed to our channel or even consider becoming a paid sponsor right here on YouTube. Click on join beneath this video or visit the members tab on our channel to find out more. Our lowest support tier starts at just 2 euros per month, which is just 24 euros per year. Whether you are a channel sponsor, a subscriber or simply stopping by for this one video, thank you very much for coming along today. I'll see you again for a new video next week, and until then, why not take a look at our video about what it was like to fly on Cathay Pacific during the pandemic on an Airbus A350 with less than 100 passengers in a completely deserted Hong Kong airport. An eerie experience the transit of Beijing airport today kind of reminded me of.